in a place where basketball is your best shot to make it, high schooler Ike Harris earns the name Flight. High screen, swings it to Harris, rip through move, takes off, oh goodness! I've been, uh, I've been meaning to introduce myself. I'm Nicole. Nicole Hot. Who else would I be? Foster? Thank you. Are we gonna have a problem? Is that it? being anonymous and I can't even imagine okay so interview though I want to talk to you about everything everything <laughs> so something that came to mind you were surprised at how people not only related to you but the messaging and your dialogue and how you evolved along the years and different roles, especially on Winona Earp. And I was wondering, sometimes you feel it's a huge responsibility, not only as a performer, but as a woman, mm -hmm. show up on the set, memorize your lines, and then you're sharing a message that's very powerful and very potent to others. How is that for you? I think huge responsibility is very accurate. Um, I think... I do feel a huge sense of responsibility. Um, the challenging thing with working in film is that it's such a collaborative process and actors are brought in at the very end. So, you know, I'm not in charge of the storylines or what I say or really how I look or I can give input. And the beauty of being on shows for longer periods of time is it's, it becomes even more collaborative over the years. Um, but you just got to really trust your team. Uh, because the hard thing about being an actor, and I see this all the time online, like if I, not even for Winona, but if I'm just like watching a movie trailer for something and I'll see people commenting of like, this actor does this, blah, blah, blah. And I want to be like, it's not their fault. It's not their choice, you know? Um, so the hard thing about being an actor sometimes can be that like, you are a vessel for a lot of other people's creative ideas. But often what can happen is it can look like you made all the decisions, which is, un which is untrue. Um, so I've just been very grateful to be on shows that have had so many amazing choices before they come to me. Um, and I think that's just luck and like choosing the right projects. There's been things where I, I have said I don't want to do that or, or over the years. But like that's also a luxury that comes further and further into your career. Like at the end of the day, I still have to pay my bills. So like, you know what I mean? I'm, it's not like I'm some wealthy that I can just be like, I don't want that job. I think I'll wait around for a year and a half for the perfect opportunity. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I think it's a balance. It's always this balance of, you know, picking the right projects. I am fortunately at a place now in my career where if there's an audition that comes through and I'm like, I don't want to do that. I, I can, I feel like I trust enough that I've built enough of a resume that like, you know, I will have another opportunity and it's not going to like the casting director's not going to be like, well, screw this girl. Who does she think she is? Like, I think I've, I've built enough respect now within the industry, um, which is comforting, but yeah, I mean, like I hate saying no to work. So it's like, uh, it's always this balance and it's tricky because one of the things that I know myself and a lot of my castmates try to do when we shoot, I'll talk about my owner specifically is like get offline a little bit. Because it's really hard to, you're, you're trying, it's so important to me to play the story that Emily, our showrunner, has written and that the writers have conceived and the producers have all weighed in on because of that team element. Like, I'm just a player on the team. So it's really important to me to not have the influence of too many of those outside voices. Of course, over the years, you get to know the fans and what they want. And like when you're shooting something, you're like, oh, they're going to love this. Or, oh, I don't know how they're going to feel about this. That's always in your mind. But I try really, really, really hard 
not to think about it too much and kind of like block out a little bit more social media when I'm shooting, just because I want to stay true to um, the ideas that are being presented in the script and not have like outside influences. The thought of being famous and like take that word with what you will, because it's such a bizarre concept, but was not or notable or known or whatever was not really on my radar so much. So I think, um, and it's a, it's like a beautiful byproduct because with notoriety comes the ability to elicit change, but it also comes with a huge sense of a huge responsibility to do it in the right way. And I think that with the increase of social media and how like, you know, there's like just opinions and overshare and like so much stuff on the internet. Um, it becomes like a really delicate power. For the artist, for the creator, you hear a lot of negativity and people that's mm-hmm. what they live for to destroy someone or annihilate someone's joy, right? There are those people out there. Totally, totally. And I think with everything, like you have to, it's all about ratio. Like for every thousand things that are amazing, there's going to be negativity no matter what you do, especially like sports players. Like if you're, if you're out there giving of yourself in a public way, it's just kind of comes like you have to just sort of accept it. So yeah, I, I have always felt, uh, especially with Winona, but also like with my working mom's character with Alicia, one of the things I really struggled with with Alicia is she's very much, um, I felt like Alicia represented a, a type of mother that like really exists and really deserves to be re- represented in a respectful way. And her type of mothering, you know, is, is equally as important. Um, and one of the things I really struggled with is, was Alicia was sort of like, sometimes she was the butt of the joke. And that's the hard thing when you're working on a comedy. Cause you're like, I get it for the greater purpose of this comedy. You know, I like, you got to stay in your lane. You're part of the team. So you have to play the note in the script. Like if, if they want you to play a B flat, you got to play B flat because a C sharp is not going to work. It's going to throw the whole thing off. Um, so I think um, with Alicia, what I, what I struggled with with her was like, I was like, but she, she's, why is she the butt of the joke? Like she deserves to be taken seriously and she deserves to like people, mothers like her exist all over the place. Um so like that sense of responsibility of, of, and I had some wonderful com- conversations with our showrunner, Catherine Reitman about that. And like Alicia had this really beautiful moment where she connected with um, the two main characters Anne and Kate, um, where she finally connected and like broke down some of their barriers because they had had so many differences. And so there is a lot of sense of responsibility with these characters. And then there's an aspect of having to forgive yourself and acknowledge that you're a part of like a greater machine. So it goes a little bit back and forth, but I think what I can control is on, you know, online social media, but mostly like social media, it, I, I, it is what it is. Um, but I think interviews and stuff is what I really enjoy because I feel like in an interview, I could, we can really talk about things that are bigger than a 150 character t- tweet. And there's, there's room for nuance and conversation in a way that doesn't exist on social media, which drives me nuts and a way that you'll never see through watching a TV show that an actor's in because it's through the lens of somebody else. So I want to just be unapologetically myself and I'm sure you feel that way too. Totally. And as an actor, as a director, as a writer, it's, to me, that's what makes it relatable to the audience. And when you said something about you have to kind of let your ego go, I remember in Bounce that there was this moment where this kid who became the star player on the basketball team, he had never been the star of anything. He had never been the center of attention of anything. And you could just see in in the performance how his ego just explodes. And the coach pulls Uh him over Uh and says, listen, you got to watch yourself, watch your step. He's like, hey, man, it's my time to shine. And 
here you are. You have an amazing fan base. You are beloved. You just won oh, that's very the sweet. equivalent of the Academy Award. Well, I, <laughs> I don't know if it's the Academy Award, but it, it's a very big honor. And the fact that it was the Canadian Screen Awards, the one that I received was from the fans. And that's that's the biggest honor you can get because those are the people that I'm doing what I do for. When you were in high school, did you ever have any experiences with I don't know, bullying or someone not being so kind to you in your um, years? high school wasn't so bad for me. Uh, it was actually college. College for me was really hard at theater school. I had um, a couple of faculty members who one in particular who sort of like made my life uh, as living hell of, that he could. It was it was he was a real bully. He actually got ended up getting fired because of this repeated pattern of behavior and a lot of people reported them, but it took 10 years. Yeah, it was really, really tough because we had this system at my school where they would like call the herd. So every uh, biannually they would cut students out of the class. So you, you essentially can't, it just doesn't foster a place of creativity because you're always afraid. So it's like, how can you take risks and be creative and try something if you're worried that like the second it doesn't go well, that you're going to be kicked out of your school? Um, but the bullying aspect, yeah, in college, I struggled with it, I st- with this particular person. And, um, and like in high school, yes, here and there, a couple of things, but nothing, fortunately, nothing that was like, really confidence shattering at the time. It was more once I got to college and just the pressure of that and the pressure of that school and always getting kicked out and then going into this class where I would try something and just get verbally like ripped apart by this teacher in front of the rest of my classmates and, you know, being told that I would never be a good actor because of this or like I was never going to succeed because of that. And it took me, it took me like years of being able to get rid of that voice, like his voice in my head and those things that he planted for me. And I guess he thought, or he would justify the behavior as like, well, I was making her tougher. I was making her stronger so she could survive. But I don't know. I think there are not, there are different ways to do that. There was like this mentality of, you know, we're going to break you down and then we're going to build you back up, which I just think is bullshit. Um, but yeah, it was, it took me a while to get rid of those, that narrative in my head. Um, Cause I had a lot of, and I still struggle with like that imposter syndrome, you know, of do I deserve this? Am I good enough to be here? And, and I think as an actor, it's good to be aware. And it's also hard to be aware that there are like a lot of people who would gladly take your spot. It can be really tricky to play those mind games with yourself and be like, no, I'm, I deserve to be here. I worked hard to be here. I'm talented enough to be here. I contribute, you know, all those things. Um, and I think just like taking care of yourself mentally and doing things outside of work is so important. Like having, um, friends who don't work in the industry and having a social life. Whenever I have young, young actors ask me, you know, what do you suggest for my, me beginning a career? in the entertainment industry, I always say, get yourself friends and hobbies outside of this business. Because A, like fundamentally, how are you going to play real people if you are so out of touch with like the experience of anyone outside of your industry? Um, It's going to be so rare that we're playing actors. And then B, like, I just think it's really important to ground you to not be in the headspace of the chatter of work all the time. I think that goes for any profession. You played basketball for years. Yeah. But on teams like you, it does become your other family as well. Totally. Good or bad. Coach, annoying you that day, whatever it is, it's still your family. And I'm wondering um, if that informed how you are with with groups, with um, your fellow actors. Do you think that those years in basketball helped? Huge. I think huge, huge, huge. I think team sports are so important, especially for kids growing up. 
that sense of being part of like a greater shared goal, I think is huge. You can get like, I remember being lonely as a kid. And so my basketball was like a huge part of my development and learning to work with other people. When did you realize, oh my God, I'm pretty good at this? Pretty good. I don't know. I sort of like peaked when I was like 14, 15, which was fine because I think I was also like really discovering at that age, my love of theater and performance and deciding that that sort of the like creativity and storytelling was the direction that I really wanted to go. So there was like these little moments, but with basketball, I think I just, I loved the team element. That was a huge part of why I loved it. Cause I felt like I had like a family and people my age and we would travel together and stay at hotels and like get up on the weekends and go and I would play like seven games in a weekend and it was the best. I'm getting you on the court. I'd love to. One time at um, a convention, I did play with a few herpers, which was really fun. I'm so rusty though. I've actually asked, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I've asked our showrunner, Darren on Goodwitch, which is the Hallmark show that I'm shooting right now, if he can write me a basketball scene. But nobody, we, we, there's a bunch of scenes in Goodwitch because one of the um, guys who, Jamie, who plays Sam, he is a really good basketball player and his character like is always shooting hoops and having these basketball scenes. And I just want to do a scene with him on the basketball court. So I keep on being like, Darren, I mean, just take any scene and instead of putting it in the kitchen, put it on the basketball court. I love theater. And I studied like classical Shakespeare when I was in theater school. Like, and one of the issues I always had with it is I was like, there isn't a lot of people who want to watch this anymore. So what I love about Bounce is I love how it's taking this classical art form of opera and making it new and fresh and appealing to a whole other generation of audience. And I'm so inspired and encouraged by that, that people are making this type of work because I think it's, it's so important. I can't wait to see it. Like, I'm so excited to just see how it plays and the story in its full form, I guess. I think the reason you'll love it is because the aspects of basketball are actually there. You see the players, it's choreographed, but they're playing and shooting and people get excited about yeah. the game, but then the music is really compelling. Not right. only the opera, but the hip hop and the spoken word, the rap. So they all come together in this beautiful marriage on the basketball court. Who eat the better baller? The better baller? The future me. Not only is Flight winning on the court, but he's also scoring with the ladies, especially Future's girl, Sabrina. On these streets, the stakes are high and the danger is real. I don't want these dudes to keep happening, man. That's why I'm pro street ball. Hey, we ain't going nowhere. Do your job. I'm your point guard. I'll take care of you. Come on. Athens Park, after dark, where only the strong survive. We they question your heart. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I mean, it's like everything that I love wrapped up into a beautiful shows i mean selfishly i can't wait but i i'm really excited for what you guys are doing and i i just can't wait to see on these streets the stakes are high and the danger is real I don't want these dudes to keep happening, man. That's why I'm pro street ball. Hey, we ain't going nowhere. Do your job. I'm your point guard. I'll take care of you. Come on. Athens Park, after dark, where only the strong survive. Weak, they question your heart. Wake up, guys. I love you. 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 I love you for it. caught you in so many different moments like all your all your essence just shows through it I was like it's very get a real like that yeah they're very talented super talented it's so much work like it's always amazing to me how talented all the fans are like they the art and the 
there's just like people who do dances to songs on the show and people who do visual art and digital art and editing and write music. And it's really amazing. It's kind of amazing to me how creativity begets creativity. It's sort of like this flow, this cycle that I really love. So uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible to see. It's, it's just so nice to see people getting inspired, you know, to express themselves in whatever form they, they want to. Well, or cosplay is another one, like when people build their own costumes off the show, which is so great. Yeah. You do that? Or you mean your fans do that? The fans do that. Yeah. So they'll take a costume and like break it down and, and find sometimes the exact costume piece. Like they'll find, I don't know how, from a particular store or they'll build it. God. Yeah. It's really amazing. And Winona Earp. Yeah, you should look up Winona Earp cosplay. It's very, it's very cool. I was wondering if sometimes you feel it's a huge responsibility, not only as a performer, but as a woman, mm-hmm. show up on the set, memorize your lines, and then you're sharing a message that's very powerful and very potent to others. But yeah, it's a huge responsibility. I mean, as a person too, and I never, I didn't know about Comic-Cons and, you know, when I got into acting, it was more from a theater perspective so like I, the thought of um like I'm I'm much more of a and we kind of talked about this last time like I'm much more of a actor that likes to hide in my roles like I love I love that acting gives me the um the freedom or the permission to try something I would never try or to morph into somebody else I that I cat would never be or wouldn't be brave enough to do that or whatever. And especially as artists and performers, a lot of my friends are artists and I know that they tend to isolate a lot more than your average human being. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's because that's what happens. Genius happens when they're alone. Right. Then they get down into that tunnel and they don't come out for a long time. And that can be hazardous. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah. But have you ever gone too far and, you don't speak to your husband and your parents and you've been cut off for a few days and you can feel it. Oh, um, no, not too far that I don't speak to people. Um, no, 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 no. But I do, my husband's also an actor and I think like for all the, the like stress of having two people working in a very unpredictable industry brings, I think, for us, it brings a lot more positivity because we really understand what each other's going through. And I think it would be, I don't know. I, I really love that about our relationship. And I think like we give each other the space to sort of go through, you know, if we're in a creative slump or not feeling great about something, like we kind of, we get it, which I'm so grateful for. Um, but mm, isolation no, I mean, like I've, I've definitely had struggles with my mental health. I've talked about anxiety and depression in the past. Um, I've talked about being on, I was on medication for a year for anxiety and depression. I have been in and out of therapy and different forms of meditation, all to sort of keep my mind strong. Um, I, I do, I do find that the more I've learned about the science behind it, the more that I am able to catch myself a little sooner before I spiral down that, that dark hole, um, which is really great and have a, you know, be able to put these sort of, um, checkpoints in place, I guess, to be like, to, to pull myself up sooner. And that was all just done through learning how to deal with like, I'm a very empathetic person. And I think for me, I, cause I'm an actor. So like I'm a f- feeler for a living and sometimes that can be really hard because I absorb a lot of energy. Like I'm sort of spongy in that way. And um, I have to be careful about who I spend time with and what their energy is. And, and because I'll just suck it in. Um, so that's really important, but all that learning happened through going through it. And I was like in my mid twenties and going through like a couple of really, really tough years, like really dark times 
where I learned the tools that I needed for me personally to put in the checkpoints. And it doesn't mean that it still doesn't happen, but I'm much better about managing, moving through the world as a very sensitive, emotional person. Ike witnesses unimaginable trauma. Absolutely. Well, you're an empath. Yes, for sure. I can feel that about you. And what I see with our young teenagers, there's still a stigma, especially for our male actors. Yeah, for sure. Really tough time uh, disclosing how they're feeling, whether or not they're anxious, depressed, whether or not they feel as if they can't handle the role. Women are much more apt to share. And yeah cry yeah so uh, adolescents especially uh, our age range is about 18 to 26 our actors yeah so that's the way we try to hold them and give them the space to be able to talk about what's going on um but it doesn't always happen in the arts we still have to give that space i think i i shared with you i i directed autobiographical theater for a long time yes yeah you did you did that was one of the the most beautiful parts about it that people, young teenagers would share about their depression, about being in love and never and it's unrequited, about parents that are getting divorced, about their sexuality, about the learning disabilities. And they would write these beautiful monologues, but they were always laced with a little comedy. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, they're just, all this inhibition just melted away and they shared who they were. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful part of acting. I even actually wrote down, you wrote something. Can I read it? It's really sweet. Sure. Sure. Um, I find it very comforting as an actor, but then especially because it was Melanie, there is a whole other level. When Nicole's going through a real emotional journey through an episode, I leaned on her a lot as an outside eye in a way that I may not have trusted other directors. And that's Melanie Scrapano, right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Can you tell me what it was like to work with her? Because she sounds extraordinary. It was, it was amazing. So she directed, Melanie directed episode three um, of season four of Winona Earp. And the real big challenge, I was really, um, there were so many challenges to that episode one of the biggest ones is that was we shot episode three and four first, and then we went back and shot one and two. So one of the challenges with that was that we had been away from these characters for like two years. And Nicole was in a really um, dark place. She felt like she had failed. And Nicole's such a person who her sense of duty is so linked to her identity her purpose is to keep everybody safe. And she felt like she failed at that and put her family, like all the people that she loves the most in, in, in like very serious danger, almost thinking that they were never coming back. And um, so she's just dealing with a lot of like, almost like a PTSD of this experience of living kind of on the homestead and, dealing with these monsters and demons and she loses her job and the town she loves falls apart. And like everything about who she is and what she prides on herself on doing well is sort of like just erodes over 18 months. And what I was really struggling with was a to find Nicole again, but then B to find the tone of her storyline because so I remember one of the episodes we did that Melanie directed, it's a chill, it's the chili cook-off. And so we have this crazy scene with all these inmates and Winona's in jail. And there's this like crazy chili cook-off and um, it's like a scene laced with a ton of comedy. So one of the most amazing things about the show is it treads this like really interesting line of like one second you're crying and the other second you're laughing. And I think that's what makes it 
such an incredible show, A, to watch and then also to work on because you, you it, it's like every episode is so different and you're, you're doing such different, like it's such a gift. And one of the things I was really struggling with was Nicole's emotional state because, you know, how we talked about earlier, like you have to play your note or it's just like, it's not going to harmonize. So you have to like trust the writers that like they've got, they built the chord. You just need to pay, play B flat. But sometimes everyone else is playing these like super gregarious, happy, high energy. And as a, a person who feeds off of energy, you kind of want to start to go to that place because it, it, a, it feels nicer and it, it seems like a lot more fun, but you can't because you're not playing that note. So um, one of the things that was really challenging that Melanie helped me out a lot with, I remember just being like, I just don't know. Like, I don't know if I'm going too dark. I don't know if I'm bringing the tone of this scene down. I, do, I feel like I'm, I'm in a different world right now than everyone else. But those are also the, all the things that Nicole is feeling. So it's like very valid to her experience. So it works. But one of the things with working with Melanie, I think, I think it's because she, she understands the vulnerability of that. Whereas a lot of directors, like if you haven't been an actor before, going back again to what we talked about, like you're the one with the egg on your face if your note feels sour. So, so, but with Melanie, I was able to be really vulnerable and honest about that and trust that like she wasn't going to let me fall because she knew what that felt like. Raptors are great. I'll, I'll What's that? a game with you. Okay, that sounds great. Well, next time we can travel, we have a lot of things to do. I'm going to come see Bounce, and then we'll go to a basketball game. Yes, and we can practice in my living room. In, in your living room, like you're on your net. Exactly. It will be perfect. I can't wait. So what's happening with Bounce now? Like, so what are you guys amidst all this? Because I just think it's such an incredible, like, I think we talked last time, but I think it's so amazing, and it makes me so happy when I heard about the project. Really excited because the New York premiere of Bounce is going to be performed at the Harlem stage in early spring of 2022. And we'll also be doing promo shows in this fall. And we'd love if you and your fans could come and watch, come to New York. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I mean, it's like everything that I love. So that will be very exciting for Bounce to perform. So That's- there's... So is it like the same cast that you're using or is it sort of like a rotation of whoever is available at the time? We wish we still had the same flight, but he has moved on and his knees started giving away because it's, it's very taxing on your body. Yeah, for sure. Very rigorous, but we're on in a search for flight. I'll send you all the recs. Great. A, a beautiful, black man that can sing opera that can play basketball we're not asking too much i know right i'm like geez that's a that's a tall order This 
I'm sure you'll find him. And people that we audition, everyone is just so excited to be a part of this. Yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled to have you come see it. I just can't wait to see where it goes. I'm really, really excited for the next couple years of the journey of the show. Really, I, I hope we can keep this dialogue going. I am just enamored with you. I think you're so Aww, Thank you. You're so easy to talk to. <laughs> Someone at the public was casting for a brand new original theatrical piece. Would you ever audition for it one day? Would you do that? Well, of course. I totally would. Absolutely. I mean, I'd love to. I, I miss theater very much. Um, and I've been so fortunate to work on incredible television shows. Um, but I, I do, I would love to work on theater again. I mean, I, I keep on saying to my husband, like, I, I want to go to New York for like a two week Shakespeare intensive or like, that would just be such a dream to just go. And, you know, it's, I think when you're acting, it's so rare that you get that conservatory ex- experience again, where like it was when you were in school where all you were focused on was exploring this craft for however many years. And I would just love that. And I really like, I, it took me a while to fall in love with New York until the last time I went. I don't know why it just like, it, I wasn't like an instant in love person. I've been enough times now that I definitely, like, for me, if I was to ever live in the States, I think it would be New York. I spent a few years on and off, like, five years living in Los Angeles, and it's a great city, but New York is much more my my style, my vibe that I like. So, it's an amazing place. But would I, I mean, yeah, sure, I'd audition. <laughs> I don't know how I do, but I try. This program, if, if there must be a two weeks <laughs> if you're in the city. Let's make it happen. Let's manifest it. There must be something. Okay, we'll manifest it. That will be on the 2021, maybe 2022 because of COVID, but 2022. Let's see. Maybe you'll come to one of our rehearsals. That's so fun. Yes, I don't know. I don't know what the next couple of years are going to be, but it's going to be awesome, whatever it is. And again, I'm so grateful. Oh, thank you. I'm so grateful to you. Pharrell, you are just a wonderful person. <laughs> thank you. I do too, Jackie. Thank you so much for chatting with me. This was awesome. It's so, it's so lovely to get to know you and hear about what you're doing. And I just, I can't wait till we get to hang out in person. It's going to be so fun. See you. And high flying feet on a full court stage of hardwood and concrete. This game, this is my instrument, this game is my drum beat.